Thanks for staying with us. So our guest today, the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, has criticized Nigerians for leaving their refrigerators, air conditioners running while they are away from home, citing a lack of awareness from electricity consumption. That was what was trending, but he has come around to say that's not how he said it, and that was, it was misrepresented and misinterpreted. However, he's here with us on the show, Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you. I'm happy to be here too. You know, we've been doing quite to a bit of media rounds and we're welcoming you to, welcome you to the Council of Women, mm -hmm. the Council of Nigerian Women. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. We love, we love to have you to I'm because there are lots be of here. issues concerning power. Yes. And we know you've been interviewed very recently amongst mm -hmm. people, even yesterday night. And we watched the interview and we understand um, a few of the things you've said. And mm -hmm. concerning the refrigerator issue, you said it yesterday mm -hmm. that. Um, that was not how it was, what you were just saying, yeah. you were saying jokingly, and, you, and you, you offered an apology, yes. which we accept. Your apology mm -hmm. didn't mean it that way, we understand. <laughs> but one of the things um, I'd like to start with, and I don't know if the ladies allow me to start with, is that I got from your interview was that um, you, Mr. President, and all the stakeholders realized that you needed to inject liquidity into the power sector. Yes. And you said, hmm, where can I find the money? If I ask Nigerians to pay this money, they will scream. So let us find all those Banana Island, 15% of the consumers, those ones that they have small change. Let us, force, let us quadruple or triple their tariff and get them to bear the brunt of this liquidity we are looking for. Now, the question is, was that a fair thing to do? Or is it even a legal thing to do to segment 15% of your consumers to have them pay that 200, uh, 225 uh, tariff, Naira, Naira tariff. Uh, is that fair? Uh, was, that, was that a fair decision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Once again, I say good morning to you ladies. Good morning. And I want to um, appreciate you for the good job that you've been doing. It's all in the line of uh, national service. Yes. And we appreciate you. Just keep it up. Uh, to start with, let me also make reference to your opening uh, statement with regard to what transpired in the last press briefing that we had, which I confirmed last night that I was actually quoted out of context, mm -hmm. that was actually a genuine, innocent advice to my fellow Nigerians mm -hmm. that we should start cultivating the culture of uh, consumption management. And that, that advice was not even directed at everybody. But I'm a Nigerian, and I know that a lot of people still are faced with epileptic power supply. I would not say, oh, you don't have up to 10 hours of supply. Switch off your freezer. I will not say that. Switch off your freezer. I will not say that. We are saying, for those that we are targeting now, the band A, in our transformation journey, once you start having stable electricity, the fact that we increase the tariff by over 200% does not automatically translate into 200% increase in your bill if you can manage it properly when you start having more than 20 hours of supply. That was my innocent advice. And I even passed it across jokingly in a very comical manner. I never knew it was going to be blown up. I know Nigerians are touchy. Nigerians are angry based on what they have suffered in the past in terms of energy poverty. So, like I said, uh, it's like a case of the landlord and the tenant. Yeah. When there's a disagreement, whether it's the tenant that is... At fault, you must be the one to apologize. Okay. If it's the landlord, you must apologize. I say, okay, no problem, just bear with us. But the good thing out of this is that uh, the thing has uh, provoked a national discourse with regards to the state of our electricity. It has created a national awareness. And the message was also not lost in all this. People are now aware that consumption management is very key to reducing our energy cost. So I'm happy okay. for that. Now, co question. coming back to uh, the Band differential A. pricing <laughs> and the segmental mm. pricing of electricity, let me tell you, electricity is a product. At the same time, it's a social service. And mm. uh, if you have any industry, any sector, that operation is not allowed to follow the normal or natural commercial flow of commercial pricing of such a product, the industry is going to get terminated in a short while. Mm. Because investors, they need to recover 
their costs and if possible make a markup on their investments but because of the criticality of the power sector for energy to everything we do government is ready to ensure that everybody has access to energy so you cannot treat it like the normal commercial product okay so the first intention was oh can we remove the tariff completely we said no we cannot based on the fact that Nigerians are currently passing through a lot of hardships yeah. based on certain recent decisions of government that are tough, but they are necessary. We have seen the harmonization of exchange rates that got the exchange rate escalated. We have seen the complete removal of the first subsidy. We have seen the inflation rate. We have seen so many things that have led to increase in cost of goods and services. And Nigerians are really suffering. Mr. President said, no, this is not the right time to remove subsidy completely. At the same time, the government that is bearing the subsidy, they are not able to source enough cash to back up this subsidy, which is why we have seen or witnessed the accumulated debt in the sector that we are owing the power sector operators, the generating companies, the gas supply companies, and all that. And it shows that there is paucity of fund and lots and lots of other critical sectors competing for the same fund from government pockets. Okay. The subsidy requirement for 2024, for example, was to be about 2.9 trillion, almost 3 trillion naira. Our power. budget, yes, on power. Yes, our budget is 28 trillion. That is 10%. We are saying, no, let us be realistic. Let's be a bit reasonable and considerate with government. Government can never afford to fund a 3 trillion. Over 10% of our budget. When other sectors are there, yeah. we have housing, we have works, we have health. defense, health, education, and all that. We must we now say, okay, let's look for a middle ground position. Let's look for the high end electricity consumers that we believe that even when they don't have regular power supply, they can easily afford generators, petrol, or diesel to run. And we're saying, okay, if they could do this, why not let us? ensure that this set of customers or consumers with very good infrastructure that is adequate enough to sustain stable electricity, let's start from them. Let's increase the tariff. We did not just quadruple or triple or double. It was not a random figure. We looked at what is the cost of producing electricity. Let them bear the full cost. Because this set of people are actually the ones that are consuming the larger portion of really? this subsidy, yes, mm. fifteen you have the percent. Data. Yeah, we do. We have the data. Fifteen percent of customers that we talk about, about one point five million out of uh, over twelve million electricity consumers, they, their consumption is about forty percent of market consumption. Which means that the remaining eighty-five percent, they are enjoying just sixty percent of the subsidy. We're saying no. At the end of the day, they are also better off by increasing the subsidy. You got the subsidy, the tariff, the, the tariff that we have now with the removal of subsidy for band A, is still way cheaper than the cost of generating electricity individually by fuel or diesel-powered generator. Mm -hmm. So it was not arbitrary. It was scientifically and systematically arrived at. And we're saying that the power sector has stagnated for a long time. We must move forward. And once we want to move forward, let us start with a segment. And it's a stepwise transformation of the sector. All the other bands are likely to have eventually, but they're starting with Once we are able to enhance or augment or upgrade the infrastructure that is necessary to provide them stable electricity. So there will be value for money. We cannot charge anybody a higher tariff if you cannot enjoy stable electricity that will make you remove your generator, that will make you not to spend money on petrol or diesel or even servicing the generator. So people will be better off at the end of the day, the average cost will be much lower to every individual. Okay. But the promise and the pledge that we are making is that we will not increase any subsidy, any, any tariff when we are not sure of improvement in power supply. Okay. That is what we are saying. So which is why I said, oh, it's going to be more like a migration. It's a journey. Okay. And we must start from Let's somewhere. Let's get a few questions. So Nigerians should um, trust us. You didn't mean to hurt anybody. Honorable Minister, Thank you. I, I am, I've heard you. I am, I am not a fan, per se, because I felt that the power sector needs a whole lot more attention than I believe it's getting. And I'm sure you would admit that um, you, maybe it's an unfortunate thing that when you got into power, we seem to 
all the problems now. Of course. It, just, it, 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 it just, everything just came up just when you mm. came in. Because I live in the band A zone. And I'll say that we've experienced worse power supply in the past few months. Yes. So if I have experienced a constant deterioration of my power supply, I've had, we've had grid shuts down yes. back to back. To back. back. Yes. And it affects everybody. And we've had that. We, we used to, uh, truthfully, we used to have 24 hours, even 48. We were having days of no power outage. And we were told then that we were paying a cost reflective cost. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised now that suddenly the, the true actual cost reflective um, um, is now 200 and something as 65. opposed to what we were paying before. 63. Yeah, we were paying six, well, 69. 69. We're, uh, we're, we're paying 63, six, yes. yes mm -hmm. 69. So, so some locations have different yes. rates. They have different augmentations to the rates as well. But I don't want to talk much about Band A because Band A is, like you said, a 15%. Yeah. Let's talk about the remaining 85%. The remaining 85% that they do not, they contribute money to buy transformer and they don't still have light. And they are the majority. Mm -hmm. And they are still experiencing power grid collapse. And it seems like you are not, you don't have any, you're not looking at them. No, oh, oh. no, 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 no. That's a misconception. We're looking at every Nigerian. We're looking at every electricity consumer. Let me first address what you said about uh, all the problems summing up and uh, crystallizing in the last two, two months. Eh? The problem in the power sector is an accumulated, accumulated problem mm. over the years, more than 50 years, since the days of uh, ECN to NEPA. ECN is the electricity company of Nigeria in the 60s, to Nigeria Electric Power Authority, NEPA, to PHCM Power Holding Company of Nigeria, before it was unbundled, and we had the generating companies, the transmission company, and the distribution companies. If certain steps had been taken in the past, probably would not be at this state. What we are witnessing today is the consequence or a reflection of the actions and inactions of past administration. But we're not complaining. We are taking over both the liability and the asset, and we must find a way out of this. We have never enjoyed stable electricity. Everybody knows I'm also in Nigeria. I live here, and I've lived there all my life. But what happened in the last two months? It's also the issue of subsidy. All the subsidies that we have been enjoying since, Excuse like me, then. Sir, how does the how, how does the government pay subsidy on power? Because I'm coming. I will explain yeah, that. Yeah. The subsidy that we have been enjoying, they have not been fully funded by governments, so they have been accumulating as a debt mm. okay. to the generating companies, to transmission companies, and. The companies have continued to produce and generate and transmit. Let me, let Even, me pause. I'm, I'm coming. Let me just land on this. Okay. Despite the huge debt. Mm. But in February, they came up and said, Government, you are owing us 1.3 trillion for generation. The gas companies are saying, You are owing us 1.3 billion dollars for supplying gas. You must start paying us now. Mm. Except, unless we will not produce again. Mm. And Production or generation went down from 4,500 megawatts down to 3,000 megawatts. Mm. That was why you noticed that okay. nationwide so blackout in February. Mm. It was deliberate. Mm. The people refused. So it took me so much effort and energy to go around, still appealing to them that government has them in mind okay. that will start paying down now. That is what cost. This is why I wanted you to pause because yes. I wanted what what what, what okay asked. Many Nigerians have that issue. They are not clear. So let me try to illustrate it. Mm -hmm. This is the Nigerian consumer. Mm -hmm. yes. What we are paying is not cost reflective. It's not. Mm -hmm. We are not paying the true value, value. of the tariff that we should be paying. Yes. Government is saying, because I know you cannot afford it, you cannot afford it, mm -hmm. I will pay subsidy mm -hmm. to the gen Jenkos. This is the Jenkos. Mm -hmm. They are the ones generating. Yes. And this is a cost for their own generation. So, to, for example, generation is saying, okay, for me to produce for you, mm -hmm. this is going to be 1,000 naira. Yes. But you can't, you can't afford 1,000 naira. Mm. You can only pay 100 naira. Mm. Me as government, I'll pay 900. Mm -hmm. That 900, they've been owing Jenkos. They are not paying Jenkos. Jenkos now saying, this 900, you're not paying me. I'll be producing, you know. Yes. But now that, after I was saying, I'm not producing. No, this is a new administration. Pay us. Let us. So that's the issue. Of, that, that's the subsidy yeah. part. Let us compel them to start payments. Okay, so we are clear. Understand? Yeah. So we are clear Thank on that. Very I wanted, much. Okay. Because the past administration was outgoing. Mm. Okay. We didn't have much to squeeze out of them. Okay. But this is a really renewed really agenda administration. Okay. They are saying, oh, let us pull our weights for them to know that we are important. Mm. 
so that you can start paying down on the debt. You have illustrated the okay, subsidy. So now let me property. just add, because I like, I like Amaka and Rama to come in here. Yes. Just so that we are clear, because I like yes. one, one, what I like about this show is that we break it down for Nigerians to understand. Yes. So what you're now saying, this 900 that I'm owing you, how do I find this money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Banana Island people, you Brand A people, mm -hmm. right? You can afford pay some of this because I'm owing them X trillion. Does it go into that's, that? That's even going, so, going forward. Uh -huh. That one is a legacy debt now. Oh, so the money you are collecting from us is not, not to, to offset it is legacy. Not, it's not to offset What is the money it? for? What is the extra money, money that you're going to, to collect? to ensure that we don't add more to the existing debt. It's okay. Yeah. Because production is ongoing. ongoing. Okay. Let me, okay. Just in one minute. You have just said it. You have hit the point now. Cost reflective, for sake of argument, is mm -hmm. 120 naira. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, mm -hmm. if people are allowed to pay 120 naira sincerely, mm -hmm. there will be sustainability and continuity of this sector. Mm -hmm. Nobody will shout. Mm -hmm. Because out of the 120, the value chain is three segments generation, transmission, and distribution. The cost to the Genkos, the capital investment, operation maintenance cost, staff cost, 60 naira. There's a transmission company, mm. which is the owner of the national grid yeah. that undertakes the long time, long distance transportation of power from the point of production to the point of distribution. That is TCN. Their own cost is 10 naira. Mm. The distribution companies that we have across Nigeria that takes power to the doorstep of household, businesses, and industries, their own is 15 naira. Mm. So total is 120 mm. that you should pay as a consumer. Mm. The distributors, the discos, are the closest to the people. So they that the one that collects everybody. of everybody. What they collect 120, they remove 15 naira at source, you give transmission. 70 to embed, that is the middleman. Mm -hmm. 10 naira from it will go to transmission, mm -hmm. 60 will go to generation. Mm -hmm. The government said, No, mm -hmm. I want my people to enjoy cheap electricity. Okay. Don't pay 120 naira, mm -hmm. pay 60 naira, that is 50% subsidy, mm -hmm. and I will add 60 naira. When did this start? It has started since. Mm -hmm. I'm coming it to was that. Not open. Yeah, it was not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have but transparency now. Mm. Past sector has always been run like a court. Mm. Nobody knows. Which is why I said mm. this our uh, discourse has led to national awareness. Mm. So I'm saying now 16 are collected from mm. the consumer mm. to the disco. Disco, of course, they mm. would deduct their own full yes. 50 naira. Okay. Yes. And there's 10 naira left. Yes. The 10 naira left. They give it to NBIT. Government. Uh, give it to NBIT. NBIT will ask government, give me 60 naira to augment this yeah. so that I can settle to the other two operators. Government said, I don't, I don't, have, money. I don't have money. Okay. Okay, they will only okay. distribute 10 naira between the two of them. Which is That remaining 60 naira has now accumulated over, over time. time. Now, right. That is okay. it. Okay. Since we have, okay. Let me okay. let's go ahead, Ramat. Okay, okay Ramat. sir. Since we have established the fact that, okay, this is the amount and all of that that is going to be this, what have you done in respect to making sure that all of us are all metered? That's the band A. Thank you very much. Band B. Band A. Band Everybody. Everybody. All, metered. all the 12 million customers. Okay. Consumers. Mm -hmm. we, we, let me tell you, like I told because you, you can't be giving us historically, I'm coming. Nobody likes estimated billing. Mm -hmm. When you have estimated billing, someone is cheating mm -hmm. someone. someone. Either the discos are cheating the customers, or the customers are cheating the disco, or the staff of the discos are cheating both the customers and, and so it is not uh, uh, acceptable. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have over 12 million electricity consumers. The mid train penetration is just a little over 5 million. We have close to 8 million meter gap, mm -hmm. which means that households, businesses, institutions, industries that are not metered, mm -hmm. they are 8 million. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of metering, mass metering initiatives in the past, mm -hmm. accelerated metering initiatives in the past. I will tell you two CBN started one, they started from phase zero which they completed, one million meters. Mm -hmm. I think about 950 was installed. Mm -hmm. But there were lots of discrepancies noted in that phase zero of the mass metering program, and CBN refused to move to phase one. We had a World Bank intervention mm -hmm. to meter 1,250,000 households and businesses. They started it. There were issues, litigations. The association of Meter manufacturing of Nigeria, it took them to court. But they cannot make it all imported. They must patronize them. That one also took a while. Yeah. Not until I got to the office that I resolved this issue. And they now said, okay, let's go ahead. That one is still on. 
Now, Mr. President said, we cannot be doing all these uh, petty, petty initiatives. Let's do a big bang so that we can harmonize all the initiatives under one umbrella. And he created what we called Presidential Metering Initiative, the PMI. And he appointed the council. And by privilege, he made me the chairman of this council. Okay. Well, the target he has given us is that Nigerians, in the next five years, nobody should have estimated billion again. Mm -hmm. Because metering is also expensive. What he has done is minimum of two million meters installation on a yearly basis over the next four to five years. That's about 10 million meters to be brought, to, 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 to be installed in people's homes. And he's given us a seed capital of about 100 billion, and we need about 400 to 500 billion on an annual basis to achieve this. You can see that it's a huge fund that is required. Seed capital, 100 billion. We're going to have debt capital of another 400 billion. Mm -hmm. And we are already having support and assistance from NSIE. That's the Nigerian uh, Sovereign Investment Authority okay. to give that loan. And this thing will be paid back over a long time. So I can assure you that Mr. President is first addressing the issue of metering. And we are going to get there, inshallah. Okay. Which is why okay. I always like us to see power project as a journey. Because it takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to begin that journey. And you'll be making progress on a yearly basis. When you are doing repairs, mm -hmm. even the road, I made an example of Lagos by the Expressway. It was being repaired, renovated and upgraded for almost 12 years. During that repair, there were pains, even more pains than the usual. But then when we finished, from we, we, so we started enjoying. So, so, so we must bear this of, a bit. For, for, for concerning the issue of meeting, I'll come to you, Maka. Mm. Because Nigerians are saying that, okay, for those of us that are in the interim, yes. pain estimated, can government do something to reduce the burden? Because sometimes it's estimated billions are um, way past estimated. But let me tell you, there's already um, a regulation okay. on estimated billions. Mm. There's a cap. Okay. There's a maximum mm. you can charge a customer. Exactly. Do people know yes. that? Yes. Let me tell you, just a month ago, yeah. there were penalties and there were refunds mm. made to customers oh. in billions of naira. Mm, wow. really? For those, these, yeah, billions. Like no, that. no, it was out in the papers. But it's even like For those that we felt them. they overcharged the customers, mm. they did a bit. NERC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, oh, said re refund billions. I can, I'm sure of that. I signed I up. I did not get any refund. Wow. We yeah. did not so, get any refund. And this is going to be continuous. Mm. We are going to be very, very, very strict okay. with the management of the discourse okay. now. Okay. okay. We are going to be very strict. So, right. There will be sanctions mm -hmm. for non-compliance. Any disco that is indicted, you can see that even in this recent review of tariff upward, mm -hmm. Abuja disco has been charged, penalized 200 million. You understand? For actually uh, uh, putting together some communities mm -hmm. as band A when they are not enjoying band A service. Mm -hmm. This will be because the Electricity Act of 2023 has allowed us to do this. In the past, the PSRA, the Power Sector Reform Act, did not allow us with punitive sanctions. Yeah. 10,000 naira per day for a disco that is airing, that is being indicted. 10,000 naira per day for 30 days is just 300,000. For one year, it's 3.6 million. If any disco committed any offense, they just write a check of 3.6 million to neck, and that is the end. But now, there is no limit to such penalties and sanctions. Before, the NEC was not given the power to remove the border management of these schools when they err or they commit an offense. Now but now, the EA 2023 has amended that. Them. So, we have the power to do all this. But why we have not been seeing a lot of this is, we came, I came into the office about seven, eight months ago. The first three, four months, you have to be on top of what you are doing. You must investigate the issues, establish genuine issues with this industry. Then, list out or document workable solutions mm. that you start implementing. Right, so after ahead. six months, we will now start implementing. So you can see that we have hit the ground running yeah. and we will okay. not stop. Let me, let me go you. on a short break. When we come back, we'll start with Amaka. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay.